Welcome to the Make and Design Podcast. I'm your host, Karina Gardner. On this podcast, we're unraveling the everyday joys and dilemmas of design, making, and business. For makers who want to be designers and for designers who are makers, this is your inside scoop to help you grow your business and bring more creativity to your life. Hey guys, today we're going to talk about workflow and building a better workflow for your business. I don't know a single business, especially design business, where it, especially if you're the solopreneur, where you're not going out of your way to figure out the best way, the best workflow that works for you. Okay, so we talk about this often in Design Suite. Everybody, the thing I'm starting to realize is that everybody has a different workflow process, right? But there are certain things that will make your workflow better if you think through them and kind of figure out these things before either your work day begins or um, as you are designing, okay? Because what you need to do is really pay attention. So the first thing is, one of the things that has helped my workflow is figuring out when I'm going to work, okay? So like, if I know that I have to work that day from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. before my kids wake up, okay, I know that I have two hours then, then I make sure that what is happening during that time is just pure magic. It's what has to get done for the day, whether it's filming a, a tutorial for a crafting activity, whether it is showing how to build a certain block that I'm sewing, um, whatever it is that is like it actually makes a big difference in my business happens during those special hours that I've blocked off to be like magic workflow, okay? Things I know need to be ha happening. Um, the other thing we talk about when we talk about workflow, especially in my design suite program is many times, especially designers, we have a process for designing things, okay? And for some of us, it is really hard to get started. I don't know why this happens so often. Maybe you're one of these people. It seems like we get interrupted and that's how we end. <laughs> a kid, a phone call, whatever. But it's like the beginning part, like getting started, that for some reason, that is a hurdle. And I don't know what it is exactly with designers, but it, that it is a real thing, you guys. Um, where I will sit down, it will be time to design, um, say I'm designing a village that day, okay? So I'm working on a new village. I sit down and it's like, my mind is like, okay, how do I start? How am I going to start? How am I going to start? Okay. And you're like, it's like easy. You kind of just want to check your email and you want to like, for me, I have a team. And so I'm like, I'm just going to send a couple things over to the video editor or to my VA or whatever. Okay. So to avoid that, you've got to figure out a trigger to get you started. And I'm going to tell you what my trigger is. It is so dumb but I promise you it totally works, okay? I'm, I'm pretty organized and I have a file system and we actually even have a course called Workflow and Production in Design Suite for this and I show exactly how I set up all of my folders and everything, okay? I go in and I, go, I immediately go to whatever I'm working on. So say I'm working on a village and it's for Ink Club. So I go to the Ink Club folder, okay? I go to, we, I do like a dated system. I go to the date and then I just go ahead and I create the folder. That's all I have to do, you guys, and I name it. So I usually do, I have a number system. I do my number and I do like Christmas Village or whatever I'm working on. We're, we're going to pretend Christmas Village right now. Christmas Village, okay? I put that in, folders made. Something about that one little thing, that one little workflow thing, which is the first thing I always do, you guys, which is the other thing. It's like a trigger for me. I build the folder and it's like the rest of it happens. Usually what I do is I start by building out the rest of the folder. So then I, um, I'll build, okay, I'm going to put five houses in this village. So I built the first folder. So now I'm going to build five more folders with the different villages. Okay. Then I will go take a look at my old villages because my design suite members know if you've already created it, there's probably some way to revisit it and change it up. I will go looking for all the old stuff and kind of 
get ideas about my old villages and what I want to bring into the new village. Okay. And I might copy an old file or even start a new file, like an illustrator for that village. And I will do a couple of things first. Okay. So if you're not a silhouette person, this is not gonna make any sense to you. For those of you who love SVG files, have a Cricut or a silhouette machine or a brother or scan and cut or whatever, you're going to know what this is. So I will start building long links of score lines. Okay. And then I will set up my preferences so that they magically set up into inches or two inches or whatever. Okay. Those couple of little illustrator steps for me, things that I'm actually doing as I'm designing, like pop, like make sure that the next part of my process where I'm being creative and designing goes very smoothly. Okay. So if you are kind of in a rut, and you're trying to build some kind of workflow process. I just told you a couple of things I do. It's not for everybody. Okay. Maybe you're a sticker person. Guess what? You can create a workflow just for stickers. Maybe you already have die lines set up. Maybe you already have sticker sheets set up that you can come back to tags already set up. Okay. We had someone in design suite who did that and suddenly her workflow process started going way, way faster. Okay. So, you need to identify the things in your process. And one of the things you can do before you even get started is you could literally like sit down to work and map how you do things, like have a piece of paper next to you and map out what you do and in the order you do it. Okay. I think awareness of how we actually process our creative juices, how we're actually producing the design work is very, very helpful. Nope. Like, I don't know anyone who really does it except for maybe me where I'll kind of map out some of my creative processes by doing that. I can tell what my triggers are for me. One of my triggers is creating a new folder. When I create a new folder, it's a sign to myself. It's time to create something new and it, I don't get scared. I get excited. Like I suddenly feel my heartbeat go up a little bit and I'm like, <gasps> Oh, I'm going to make something awesome. Okay. And it feels so good. Okay. But I need that little trigger because otherwise you kind of stare at your computer or your paper or whatever you're working on and you get a little nervous. Like, what am I supposed to do now? Okay. So build yourself some trigger triggers, see what kind of state of flow you get into. It's going to be awesome. Okay. It's going to be so awesome. But workflow is important. So if you can kind of identify time of day that you can block off for yourself, and then you can identify what's happening as triggers in your workflow process, that's really going to help you. It's going to help you because you'll be able to jumpstart whenever you need to, to create a new project. Maybe for you, like creating a new folder and naming it is not going to be your trigger. Okay. Maybe for you, jumpstarting it is having um, um, like a pad of paper in front of you or your watercolors in front of you and just starting to draw. Maybe that's your trigger to get you excited. And then the moment that happens, figure out what happens next to digitize it or get it ready for consumption or um, being able to put it in a shop. Like those are the things that we try to concentrate on in Design Suite to make sure that you've like taken the thing that you've made and then we've gotten it into a place where other people can enjoy it and consume it, right? Like you're going to give it to somebody else. They, they might buy it from you, but that's still giving it to somebody else and letting them consume it. Con, consume it. Oh my gosh. So I hope this was helpful. If you have been trying to figure out your own workflow, um, first of all, if you're a design suite member and you're still struggling with workflow, you should be coming to a meeting with a hot seat and a question and say, I need help with workflow. Okay. So that's just a reminder to my design suite members. Like I'm here to help you any way I can. And so that we can have those aha moments in our weekly meetings. Okay. If you are someone who is not in my design suite program, you're just trying to figure it out on your own. My recommendation is to, um, really sit down and figure out what your design process is by simply doing your design process and documenting it as you do it. Okay.
All right, guys, thanks so much for joining me. If you have not left me a review, I would so appreciate it. Um, it's so it's so interesting. Podcasts really do need reviews in order to live because that's how we're able to get guests on. That's how we're able to promote. So if you can leave me a review, it really, really helps me out. And I appreciate it so, so very much. Thank you for joining me today. And I hope that you have a better workflow in the future. Hey, did you know that you can visit me at makeanddesign.com to learn more about this podcast and join my VIP group for weekly freebies? I can't wait to see you there.